are busy doing superrogatory actions, but they have neglected many things that are more important than it. And this could be a cause for our actions to be not accepted. This is why knowledge is so important. And we need to take time and we need to spend time studying and seeking knowledge. And the truth is, my brothers and sisters, there are many people, many people, perhaps in this room, perhaps not, but certainly amongst the Muslims, there are so many people who are so occupied with the dunya, with their jobs, with earning money. And this is money that be, is beyond their needs. It is money that is beyond their requirements. They work and then they do more work. And even though they have money, they work to get more money and more money. That itself is not a problem. That itself is not a problem. But it is a problem when these people neglect their worship for Allah. They neglect to worship Allah. They neglect to learn the basics of their religion. They don't know the obligatory from the recommended. They don't know what Islam requires of them. They don't know the fundamentals of their aqidah, of the belief that the Muslim should have. They are ignorant of the most basic affairs of being a Muslim. But they are spending their time and their energy pursuing wealth. And they are never satisfied. They have thousands of pounds, but they want thousands of more pounds. They have thousands of dollars, they want thousands more dollars. But these are people who know nothing about their deen. Who have not studied it and have not learnt it. And then they give the excuse. And there are people occupied and so preoccupied in their dunya. And they give the excuse. You see, they say, Working to provide for my family is a type of worship. Working to provide for my family is a type of worship. And this most certainly is, is true. Working to provide for your family is a type of worship. But you know what? Going to your wife to guard your eyes and to guard your private parts is also an act of worship. But what would you say of a man who does nothing except spends all his time going to his wife and doesn't concern himself with learning his deen? Eating is also an act of worship if your intention is to make yourself strong physically and mentally. But that doesn't mean you can spend your whole time non-stop 24 hours a day eating and eating and eating. It is the same with working. With work, brothers and sisters, this is the rule. You treat the work like you treat the toilet. Work, you treat it like the toilet. You know, you go there when you need to. You go there when you need to. You have no business making your life there. Spending all your time there. You go to it when you need it. When you finish, you get out. Work is like that. You get what you need. And then the rest of the time you do what? You spend your time studying, learning, giving dawah, praying, reading Quran, giving charity, helping the poor and the needy, involving yourself in the needs of the community, helping your family, your mother, your father, your wife, your children. This is what you should spend the rest of your time. And if you need a little bit of time, maybe to relax and unwind, that is fine also. It is like, however, eating. You do it in order to give yourself more energy to worship Allah. A scholar once saw a man wandering around aimlessly. Just wandering around aimlessly. And the scholar said to this man, What are you doing? He said, I have finished my jobs, and I finished my affairs, I'm just wandering around. And he said, is this what Allah has ordered? 
for the person who has finished his affairs? Because you know what? Allah has ordered you with something. When you have finished your affairs and you finished your work, there is something that Allah has ordered you with. And that is to worship Him. So brothers and sisters, listen to this hadith Qudsi. Verily Allah says, O son of Adam, free yourself for my worship, and I in turn will fill your chest with satisfaction and remove your poverty. And if you don't, I will fill your hands with distraction and will not remove your poverty. Subhanallah. O oh, son of Adam, free yourself for my worship. Free yourself for my worship. If you do that, if you do that, Allah will fill your chest with satisfaction. What is the use of the dunya that never satisfies you? What is the use of wealth that gives you no happiness? You just accumulate it and accumulate it. Things that you get them, but they do nothing for you. They bring you no happiness, no satisfaction, no contentment. In fact, you just spend your time pursuing more of them. This is the true poverty. This is the true poverty. If you do not free yourself for the worship of Allah, then definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to fill your heart with distraction. And this is why you see the people who are far from worshipping Allah. They are always distracted. You never find them really people who are truly happy and content. They are always depressed. And even when they are happy, it is an artificial happiness. And although they may have riches, in fact, they have poverty. Because the true wealth, brothers and sisters, is contentment. So free yourself for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we must do. We work according to what we need. As I said, treat it like the toilets. You go there when you need it. The rest of your time should be pursued in studying, reading, learning about Allah's deen, seeking ilmul nafi'ah, beneficial knowledge. Beneficial knowledge, knowledge that will benefit you. And this is important. What is beneficial knowledge? What is beneficial knowledge? Beneficial knowledge, brothers and sisters, is what leads to amilus salih, righteous actions. Ilmul nafi' wa amilus salih, beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. And there is a beautiful saying of one of the scholars. He said, "Knowledge that does not cause you to weep is not beneficial. Knowledge that does not cause you to cry for the fear of Allah, it's not beneficial." This is the beneficial knowledge. The knowledge that will benefit you is what is going to benefit you when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. This is the beneficial knowledge. Knowledge is never to be sought for its own sake. No. Knowledge is to be sought so that we can translate it into action. Knowledge that is not transformed into action, will only be a witness against you on the day of judgment. So we seek knowledge in order to translate it into action. But we cannot do action without knowledge. Knowledge without action is no good. Action without knowledge is no good. No, knowledge that leads to action. Act on what you know. Act on what you know and seek knowledge in order to act on it. When you come to these lectures, brothers and sisters, when you come to these lectures, have one intention in your mind, that you've come here for the sake of Allah, to get some knowledge which you are going to act on and you are going to implement it. And do it straight away. Don't procrastinate. Procrastination equals destruction. Procrastination equals destruction. What is procrastination? Easy. Bukra insha'Allah. That's what the word procrastination is easily translated as. Bukra insha'Allah. Tomorrow, God willing, procrastination. I'll leave it till later. 
I will do that.